What the hell is going on? You didn't make lunch today, my husband abruptly yelled at me over the phone. He seemed irritated that I hadn't prepared his lunch and that I had been away from home. I told him to take care of himself while I was gone, but he retorted, Look, you're a housewife, right? You skipped your studies to be one, remember? He didn't seem convinced, making such a big deal about not having lunch for just one day, I was fed up with him. I did all the housework and he would still take it out on me when things didn't go his way. My mother-in-law stood beside me, a faint smile on her face as she listened to my husband's yelling over the phone. My name is Emily. I live with my husband Charlie and our two children, William and Jack, who are twin boys just three years old, despite the challenges. I'm so happy being the mother of these adorable twins. Raising them is the source of my current happiness. Charlie is a typical businessman. His family owns a Japanese-style confectionery store and a shopping arcade. I quit my job shortly after our marriage to help my in-laws with their store. I started working there with a light heart, but it turned out to be much busier than I had anticipated. I not only served customers with a colorful selection of wagashi, but I also made my own sweets in the back kitchen. I had to be in the kitchen from early morning to prepare the sweets on time, especially during the busiest times of the year. Even after the birth of my twins, I continued to assist at the store. Sometimes, I would stand in the store with my children on my back. Their cries would sometimes carry through to the store even when I was babysitting them away from the shop. Despite all this, my husband was unconcerned about the confectionery business. Hey, do you still have no plans to take over the confectionery business? I asked him. We would discussed it several times, but Charlie seems to have no intention of taking over the business. I'm not taking over the store. I've told you numerous times I'm not going to take over the store isn't Wagashi is so lame these days. The number of people in the shopping arcade is decreasing year by year. And if I take over the confectionery business now, I will have no future. Charlie had no desire to take over his family's Wagashia, of course. He couldn't take over the store right now because he worked for a larger corporation. But I liked my in-law's store and didn't want to see it go away. Are you going to the Pachinko parlor again today, Charlie? Sure, of course I am. What I do on my day off is entirely up to me, he replied. On holidays, my husband always went out to play Pachinko. He would even get in line as soon as it opened. Despite this, he ignored the housework. I did all the cooking, cleaning, and laundry as well as the rest of the housework. Moreover, the most important aspect of child rearing was completely left to me. My husband spent his time at his own pace while I was busy with housework, childcare, and the confectionery shop. My in-laws are getting older, and my workload at the confectionery shop is increasing. Fortunately, they were extremely understanding of my situation, Emily. You help us with the store, and we are very grateful. Thank you so much for everything. My mother-in-law would always say, she is a lovely lady who doesn't fit the typical mother-in-law stereotype. Her gentle and kind smile always warmed my heart. I really need Charlie's assistance. He no longer appears to be interested in the confectionery, she explained sadly. My mother-in-law always looked crestfallen whenever we talked about my husband. I suppose she really wants him to take over the company, but her husband refused to agree. Well, we're lucky to have such a wonderful wife, Emily. We should stop being greedy. My mother-in-law would lavish praise on me. She valued my assistance at the store while I raised my children. When I was at the shop, she and my father-in-law would babysit the kids, which was a big help. My mother-in-law had become my go-to person. Someone I could talk to about anything, of course. She listened to my complaints about my husband, ironically. The more distant I felt from him, the stronger my bond with my mother-in-law grew. The presence of my in-laws was very reassuring to me. Right now, life felt like a blur. Raising three children meant that each day flew by with no time to think about anything else. As the end of the year approached, the confectionery became busier. It coincided with the end-of-year gift-giving season, and we were in transition. After consulting with my in-laws, I decided to stay at home this year and focus on wahashi preparation. I informed my husband, what? You're taking the kids and staying at my parents' house. My husband was clearly upset. I explained that I would only be staying for one night to help out on a busy day. And what about the housework? He asked, as expected, for my husband who does no housework at all. This was a serious problem. If I don't do housework for even one day, he gets upset. 
Even during the busy season for the confectionery, this time I'll only be away for one night. Can't you be cooperative during that time? It's just a single day, so everything should be fine, right? If you get hungry, you can prepare some meals. There will be no laundry to do if it's only for one day, I told him, assuring him there was nothing to be concerned about. But he continued to complain, you know what, you're still a housewife, aren't you? I'm telling you again, I'm the family's breadwinner. Who do you think is in charge of feeding our three children? My husband began to grumble and I didn't want to talk to him any longer, taking action without his permission. I didn't say anything else and took the kids to my in-law's house without my husband's permission. When I arrived, a lot of work was waiting for me. It was the end of the year and business was brisk at the Wagashia. Orders for year-end gifts were pouring in faster than usual and my decision to stay and assist was justified. The creation of gift items began with assembling empty boxes, a surprisingly difficult job, especially at the end of the year when hundreds of boxes had to be made for year-end gifts. My in-laws and I divided up the box-making duties. After the first day at my in-laws' house, I was exhausted, but the next day I had to work hard from early in the morning to make wagashi. To prepare for the busy day ahead, I decided to go to bed early. By the time dawn arrived, I had already started working. While the kids were still sleeping, my in-laws and I stayed in the kitchen. Quietly working on the wagashi, the sun had risen before I knew it, and the fresh morning air signaled a new day. We decided to take a break and eat breakfast. The kids were already awake and ready for their meal. I hurriedly prepared breakfast and served it at the table. They came running up to me, smiling, my in-laws. The children and I all sat around the table. Just then, my phone rang. It was my husband. What the heck is going on? You didn't make lunch today, he yelled as soon as I picked up. He seemed irritated that there was no lunchbox, which he expected to be available at all times. A shocking proposal. I told him to make his own lunch while I was gone. Had he forgotten? What do you mean, avoiding housework? He demanded, clearly unconvinced, when I suggested he prepare the food himself. He accused me of laziness. What a prick, making such a big deal about not having lunch for one day. He leaves everything up to me, and when things don't go his way, he transforms into this. I was shocked. And my in-laws appeared to be as well. They could clearly hear my husband yelling over the phone. He rambled on about his complaints before abruptly hanging up, although breakfast had just been served. The living room of my in-law's house fell silent. My husband lost his cool in such an unreasonable way. Just as expected, the kids seemed to sense the tension and refused to eat their breakfasts. My mother-in-law cheerfully said, Itadakimasu, urging my sons to eat as well, trying to lighten the mood. Then she turned to me and said, Why don't you divorce my son, Emily? I froze my hand hovering over my tea. I never expected my mother-in-law to say something like that. My father-in-law quietly ate his breakfast, an indescribable expression on his face, a turning point. I believe I was a little out of line, but now that you've been told something like that, I hope you've come to your senses, my mother-in-law said, smiling at me. It seems that when someone is truly disgusted, there's nothing left to do but laugh. I feel terrible for you as a mother. You are no longer required to be merciful to my son. Allow your emotions to guide you, she continued. My mother-in-law had probably figured out how I felt about Charlie by now. She was always supportive and encouraging, and now I knew she was on my side. My father-in-law never spoke much, but he nodded in agreement with his wife's words. Their presence was reassuring. And it was that day that I returned home with the decision made, later in the evening. My husband came home with a tense expression, clearly still upset about the lunch. I asked him to take a seat because I needed to speak with him. What do you want to talk about? He asked, cocking an eyebrow and looking at me. Sit down, I repeated, ignoring his mood. When he sat down, I held out the divorce papers. I'm going to divorce you. I'm going to divorce you, I said. The words slipping out of my mouth, my husband's grumpy expression abruptly changed to one of surprise. Why did you say divorce so abruptly? Are you kidding me? The kids are still so young, he was in a panic, unable to understand why I was seeking a divorce. He adamantly refused to consider divorce, insisting there was no reason for it. He tried to avoid the discussion by claiming it was invalid. There's a reason, I said, stopping him from fleeing. I pulled a few photos from an envelope on the table and placed them in front of him. One photo showed my husband walking with a woman, holding hands, 
Didn't you say you go to Pashenko on your days off? What exactly is this? You appear to be having a good time, I said. When he saw the photo, my husband's face turned pale. Confronting the truth, I pressed him to tell me what was going on. No, this is, well... He stumbled over his words trying to make up some nonsense excuse about how she was just an acquaintance. She's a junior employee or company, isn't she? I said my husband's movement ceased when I mentioned the identity of the woman in the photograph. He had been having an affair with a younger woman who worked at the same company. I had been suspicious of his behavior and had discussed it with my mother-in-law for some time. She suggested I hire a detective to investigate. The findings of the subsequent investigation astounded me. My husband had entered a Pashenko parlor with a woman and then gone directly to her room. I have more photos, I said. You three are very close so the investigator could take many photos. Would you like to see more? Confronted with undeniable evidence, my husband finally confessed. He admitted that while he was a Pashenko fan. He also had a romantic relationship with this woman and had been visiting her room during the day. I'm sorry, Emily. He said, I was just experimenting with fire. I'm sorry for the kids. I'm leaving this girl right now, so please don't divorce me. He was no longer at my mercy, apologizing emphatically, however. I would never forgive him. I'm dead set on getting a divorce. I'm not joking. I've been assisting at your parents' home while babysitting and taking care of things you don't want to do. I've informed your father and mother about this. My in-laws knew everything, standing my ground. I told my husband that my in-laws were on my side, not his. They both stated they would assist me in any way they could. Since we work together, we've had plenty of time to talk, they explained. We're both furious at you, of course. I informed them that we were divorcing. My husband completely lost his cool and broke down in tears. Please, I would never do something like this, he muttered, overwhelmed by the situation. He kept insisting he didn't want a divorce, but I was resolute. I can't do this with you any longer, I said. I will make certain you pay alimony and child support. I served him with divorce papers. My husband begged for forgiveness on his knees, but I refused to listen. As a result, we divorced. I insisted on alimony payments from both my husband and the woman he had an affair with. My husband also had to pay child support for our children. After the company discovered their affair, my husband chose to resign, and the woman lost her position. My in-laws were furious and informed my husband he would be cut off from the family and borrow from their home, with no one to rely on. He was compelled to work manual labor from morning to night to pay his bills. After the divorce, I continued to work at the Wagashia. My in-laws asked me to stay, and I gladly agreed. I enjoy working in the store and of course need to support my children. My in-laws want me to run the store after they retire and plan to eventually give me both the store and their home, naturally. I intend to take over. I will be the proprietress of the confectionery. I will continue to work hard and raise my children while looking forward to the future.